My name is Brian, and I'm the string music teacher at Garfield High School. If you've been following along with these videos, you might be expecting to see Miss Stephanie here. Well, she's taking a well-deserved break, and I'm standing in for her as her colleague and as her friend. We teach music together, even though we're in different buildings. Sometimes we even play music together. Miss Stephanie is a wonderful violinist, and I play this instrument down here called the double bass. It's so big that I have to have a special car just to drive it around. We're going to spend today, though, looking at the instruments that you've been working on in your classes, which is either the violin or the viola. This here is the living room of my house. I've been spending a lot of time here lately since I can't go out. I enjoy reading and practicing. I've been watering my plants and playing with my dog, Pepper. Pepper might join us today, actually. She's lying down on the floor now to take a nap. She's been very sleepy with all the walks she's been getting. So this is our violin and viola lesson, and we're going to focus on our bow hold to start. We're gonna practice new types of notes where we make really short sounds and where we connect notes together very smoothly. And to begin all of that, I want you to grab a couple of supplies. All right, now that you've had a few minutes to gather your materials and take your instrument out of your case, please grab your bow. Now, if you've been treating your bow well, every day when you put your bow away, you loosen it so that these horsehairs don't get stretched out. And that means every day when we take it out, the first thing we need to do is tighten it back up. I always tighten it and loosen it just four turns so I know exactly what I have to do when I pick up the instrument the next time. Four turns to loosen, four turns to tighten. But the best way that you can judge whether your bow is tight enough is just to look at it. It should always have a little bend to it. Not too much that the hairs push up against it when you set your bow on the string, but if it is straight, it's sort of like when you look with a straight lips, you don't look too happy. You want your bow to be a little bit happy, to have a little bit of a curve to it so that your horsehairs don't get stretched out. When they get stretched out, they can get tired and break faster. And you want your bow to last a long time and have a good, happy life. Now, to review our bow hold, I'm gonna take the bow and hold it in front of my face like this with my left hand. Our right hand is where all the magic happens. But I'm just gonna hold the bow with my left hand here, careful not to touch the hairs with my fingers, which would get oils on them and make the rosin not stick. Now, with my right hand, I'm going to make a bunny. A bunny has two teeth, and two ears. And the secret to good playing on an instrument is to have flexibility. So I'm gonna nibble some grass with my bunny's teeth and bend my thumb backwards. I'm gonna wiggle my bunny's ears to give my bunny's fingers flexibility, to give my fingers flexibility. And then I'm gonna take that bunny's mouth, open it up, set the bow on my thumb and slide it until it touches the frog. I'm gonna put those teeth back in front of my thumb, wiggle them a little bit to keep them flexible, and then my bunny, just like Pepper, is gonna get tired and take a nap. Its ear is gonna flop over the top of the stick, and its other ear is just gonna rest right on top. I know I've got a good bow hold when all my fingers are flexible, and I can tap my pinky on top, and I can look at my thumb and see that it's bent. I always tell my students, when your thumb's like this, I call that a banana thumb. Looks like a banana. Banana thumb bad. Bent thumb good. You can repeat that with me. Banana thumb bad. Bent thumb good. Banana thumb bad. Bent thumb good. So if we did that all over again, we're holding our bow up. We make our bunny wiggle his ears, nibble some grass, set our thumb under the stick and slide it until it touches the frog, teeth back in place, take a nap, tap your pinky on top, and then you can let go with your left hand and turn the bow straight up in the air. 
All right, now that we have a beautiful bow hold with our fingers at a slight angle going downwards, and with flexibility, so we can move all those fingers nice and easily, tapping the pinky and having a bent thumb, I'm gonna teach you a little song exercise. I'll sing the whole thing for you first. It's important that the bow always stays straight up and down during this song, and you'll see why afterwards. The song starts like this. Up like a rocket, down like the rain, back and forth like a choo-choo train, round and round my face like the sun, look, tap your pinky, bend your thumb. Let's try that in little pieces. The goal of this song is to make all of those fingers be flexible while the bow stays straight up and down. First part of the song, up like a rocket, down like the rain. Let's try that once more. We're gonna go up like a rocket, down like the rain. Then we go back and forth like a choo-choo train. Back and forth like a choo-choo train. Putting those two together, up like a rocket, down like the rain. Back and forth like a choo-choo train. Round and round my face like the sun. That's the trickiest one. You gotta go in a circle while the bow stays up and down and all your little fingers are being flexible and your elbows being flexible and your shoulders nice and relaxed if you're doing it right. Round and round my face like the sun. Look, tap your pinky, bend your thumb. We're gonna do just the second half of that one more time. Round and round my face like the sun. Look, tap your pinky, bend your thumb. And that end part is just to check and make sure that everything is the way you want it to be. All right, now we're ready to start making music with our instruments. You notice we spent a lot of time on our bow. I practice my bow hold every time I open up my case. Your bow is the most important part of your playing. It's like your breath when you're singing. Practice a good, balanced bow hold, and you'll have a beautiful singing voice. So now let's pick up our instruments and start singing. You've got your violin or viola. Be sure you've attached your shoulder rest or sponge if you use one of those correctly to the bottom of your instrument. And we're going to play the D major scale. I'm going to go up into my good playing position. Join me with a good bow hold. And let's play the D major scale with every note two times. We're going to play the D twice, then the E twice, and so on, starting when I count off. Ready? D major. down the scale. And there's our D major. What we just played are notes that I like to call normal notes. They just sound like you would sound if you were talking to someone. They're not short. They're not connected and blurry. They're just clear, distinct, normal notes. And musicians have a term for that. We call normal notes détaché. That's a fancy word that translates to English meaning detached. Detached meaning like they have a little bit of a space between them, but they're just kind of normal. Today, we're going to learn about two different type of notes. Détaché are the normal notes that we normally play with, but if we wanted to speak really short and choppily, we would use a type of note called staccato. The name staccato sounds kind of like what it's supposed to sound like when it comes out of your instrument. Short and choppy. I'll give you an example on the open D string.
if a normal note's like normal talking, stop, cop, talk, is like talking really chop -ily. The trick to staccato is that the bow stays stuck to the string. I told you I call detaché notes normal. Well, I call staccato notes sticky bows because the bow sticks to the string and doesn't let go in between the notes so that the front of the note is kind of like an edge and the back of the note is like an edge and the notes are all shaped like bricks. Great. Now we we're going to learn about the opposite of staccatos, notes that are smooth and connected. We've got normal notes that sound like normal speaking, staccatos that are short and choppy, and the bow sticks to the string. And then we've got what we call slurs. Slurs are smooth and connected, and slurs are when there's more than one note on the same bow. Up until now, every single note gets its own bow. Whether it's detaché or staccato. But what if we put two notes on the same bow? Like that. That's a slur. Slurs are very connected because there's no space at all between the notes. It's sort of like if you talked without ever closing your mouth or using your tongue. And you turn all the way kind of way high all together. That's what a slur is on our instrument. But unlike talking, we can make slurs sound very beautiful on our instruments. We're going to prepare for this by playing that D major scale with only one of each note. So with just one D, one E, one F sharp, let's play the D major scale using normal bows. And now, if you notice when I use those normal bows, I only used half of my bow. Now let's put two notes under each bow and use half of the bow for each of those notes. In other words, let's play two note slurs. Bow on the string, ready, two note slurs. <laughs> Wonderful job. I hope you have a lot of fun exploring these two new types of bowing, the short and sticky staccatos and the smooth and connected slurs on all of the music that you're playing. And don't forget, always warm up that bow hold so you've got a beautiful singing voice every time you pick up your instrument to play. Have a great week, everybody.